Hello everyone, I'm waiting for Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 and a couple other things to happen. Until then, I will do a recording to talk about some products and or life hacks that will help gamers or streamers. Maybe other people too, but my focus is gaming or streaming because that's what I talk about here on this channel. Okay, starting off with camping lanterns. For people who do business meetings where a camera or webcam is involved, this is a great solution. Streaming, it works too. For streamers, you could get those $200 plus professional lighting used for photography to help with the camera situation. But there is an alternative to that. If you're not looking to spend $200 plus or you don't feel like you're at a point with your stream where you know investing $200 into equipment like that is worth it, then there is the camping lanterns. They're going to be a much cheaper solution and provide similar lighting quality. The LED ones in particular have softer lighting. Certainly not as soft as those professional lightings, but they work. For the reason that they can be moved around. And because of the way their lighting is. Because they don't need a um, 12 volt uh, wall outlet, you can move them anywhere that makes it possible for the camera to get better lighting. On top of that, a lot of them have very high lumen ratings. Lumen is the rating of brightness. The higher the lumen, the better, generally speaking, depending on what type of light it is and what you're looking for. I have pulled up this one in particular because I did find it in reviews some time ago. I went back to look for those reviews, but it doesn't appear in any reviews, reputable reviews that I can find of. That's fine, though. I can still recommend this product. It's, it's a good one for $30. It's a 200 or 500 lumen uh, setting camping lantern that uses 3D batteries. D batteries are not that common, but you can still buy them. You just have to look around. So um, the one thing you do have to be aware of with this Core 500 is the more it depletes the battery, the um, less lumens it has. It's pretty uh, straightforward to understand or be aware of, but just keep in mind that those D batteries do have to be charged or replaced within a certain amount of time to keep the actual 200 to f or 500 lumen rating. There's plenty of reviews on uh, camping lanterns if you want something other than the Core 500. Uh, I'll link those in the description. Moving on. Okay. This is where I'm going to be converging two topics. In response to the D batteries, you can get this 10 cell charger. I meant to pull up the New York Mag review of this, um, but unfortunately the website was saying I had to log in to read the article, so I was like, screw it, I'll just pull up another review uh, just as a placeholder for the recording. So multiple reviews will tell you that the 10 cell battery charger is very good. It charges D, C, AA, or AAA batteries, but it only charges uh, the rechargeable types. Uh, so you'll see it mentioned in the article, that's going to be uh, NIMH or uh, the other one, um, and I'm not seeing it right away, so you can read it for yourself if you want to. But uh, the great thing about this is not just the fact that it's D battery charger, but also AA and AAA. This is where I'm going to deviate a little bit and talk about bicycle headlamps. Everyone at some point is going to have to do maintenance on their computer, whether that be dusting it out, um, putting in a new part, or something. I can tell you one of the best things you can do for yourself is get a bicycle headlamp. It doesn't matter if you're a brand name uh, owner or if you built your computer. Bicycle headlamps help anyone with their computers because it provides a very bright light that's not in your hands, which frees up both hands to make sure you're cleaning it out or putting in new parts. Most of your bicycle headlamps are going to be very bright and use AA or AAA batteries. That's where this comes in. The Tensol battery charger can be bought for $37 by itself from what I've seen, or you could get a battery bundle with it 
uh, I think it does D batteries as the bundle. It comes with four D batteries plus the charger at $50. So you're getting a slight bundle discount um, that way. So what I would recommend is getting the bundle of the D batteries and then purchasing a, uh, a AA or a AAA battery separate for the headlamp. The four D batteries will power the Core 500 lantern while the uh, AA or AAA powers the bicycle headlamp. And there you go, you have some good lighting to work with for working on computers or if you're doing camera stuff. Okay, moving on. Okay, water bottles. These are really great to have um, because you can go two to three days uh, before they need a wash. Uh, most are insulated, so they do keep the water temperature at the level you want to uh, for the duration of uh, gaming or streaming. And another handy benefit is assuming the lid's sealed and you happen to knock one of these off of your desk, most are going to be built with shatter resistant materials so they won't be bothered by a fall from the desk to the floor if the lid seal then water won't spill out they are just an overall great solution uh, for gaming or streaming because then you don't have to worry about it splashing all over the place there are a few good water bottles for this uh, I want to quickly warn you against the Nalgene's. I don't know about this particular model as I haven't tried it, but I can tell you that Nalgene's in general produce a ton of condensation um, that will drip down from the sides. And that means you're going to need a paper towel to prevent it from getting on your wooden shelving or desk. Obviously to prevent damage. You can buy a sleeve for these. Um, which come in at, I think, $10 or $11. The bottles come in at $10, so it equals out to about $20 per sleeve and per bottle combination. So you could do it that way if you really want to, but I would say that there are better solutions than this for this particular scenario. Let me go and tab over. Okay, there's two solutions I would recommend in place of the Nalgene. That's going to be this uh, Contego uh, water bottle with the uh, flip top lid. <coughs> and uh, these Takeo water bottles that also have kind of a flip lid, but it's just a different shaped uh, flip lid. Both of these would be a perfectly fine solution. It all depends on what's available in your country. Um, I will go ahead and help you out with the Takeo thing because this was a confusion of mine when I was shopping. I do have a few Takeo bottles, by the way. Um, there is a difference between the Takeo Originals and Actives uh, line. The Original has the same insulated body as the Active. The difference is in the lids. The Active has an insulated lid that's like scratch resistant or something. The original does not have that insulated, scratch-resistant lid. Something to keep in mind when you're buying this stuff because I've noticed on average the cost difference between the original and the actives is about $9. And that's kind of a lot when you're talking about buying multiple bottles. If you're not worried about having a scratch-resistant lid that's insulated, then just get the originals, which is going to be cheaper. Or you could do the Contigo um, brand and water bottle. It's up to you. But either way, I recommend one of those two. And I'll link all these reviews for you to read in the description. Okay. Now we get into the furniture. One of the annoying things is that there's very few products for uh, gaming that involves your lap. Uh, Rokat and... Corsair both make keyboards specifically designed to sit in your lap, but it's only one model. They're hard to come by and they can be very expensive. I think the Rokats is like $140 or something like that. Corsair's is I think $80 or $90. So that's not really a, a good way of handling it because it's only one product. And people might not like those products because it doesn't have the correct switches or something like that. There is a solution to this whole 
uh, lap thing, and that's using a piece of shelving to put your keyboard and mouse on. Why this is important is because of the chairs. I have, I have um, back problems from a back injury a number of years ago. Because of my back injury, I'm very picky with which chairs I use. I can tell you the gaming chairs aren't good. Except for the Respawn 800 or 900, I think it is. I'll have to look it up for you, and I can put it in the description, but... Uh, Respawn makes a reclining gaming chair that doubles as a rocking chair. It's really weird. But that one for sure is very comfortable, even with my back injury. Um, that's the only exception I would make for a gaming chair. Um, I've also tried office chairs. The closest comfort I got was the Modway Articulate Mesh Chair. But it still wasn't just as comfortable as the Respawn 800 or 900, whatever it is. Or just a straight-up rocking chair. You know those big rocking chairs you see at furniture stores that have got leather or cloth to them? And look very um, upscale, if you will? Yeah, those are really great for gaming or streaming. I'll get into how you can make that work uh, in a minute. But let me cover this lap situation. So this is the smallest Rubbermaid shelf piece that I can find. My... Rubbermaid shelf piece, the one I'm using for my keyboard and mouse right now, I think is 32 inches in length. So this is certainly smaller than what I'm using. Um, but you can certainly use this as an alternative solution uh, to the Corsair or uh, Rocat uh, lab keyboards. What you want to do in this situation is make sure that the shelf piece is long enough to rest on both armrests. That way, it's not in your lap, but instead going to be on uh, above it. That will provide you with more than enough room for whatever keyboard you want to use and whatever mouse you want to use. Now, obviously, that's going to be uncomfortable by itself, so there's some things here that can help with this. One of the things you can do is get one of those really large mouse pads. It doesn't have to be Corsair, but I just pulled this up as an example. And you can just run this across the length of the shelving piece. This piece of cloth will give you some comfort uh, when using this piece of shelving as your main desk. You can add to that using HyperX wrist rests. I didn't, I forgot to pull them up, but that's okay. I'll just link them in the description. HyperX makes uh, very long wrist rests that are great for putting on top of the mouse pad for these shelving pieces. And that right there will allow you to put um, a piece of shelf on top of the rocking chair while maintaining comfort. Let's talk about how we make the rocking chair fit now. Okay, there are two solutions for this, and both are very similar um, in terms of application. They're just different in quality. Rubbermaid is one company that makes modular shelving units, and Alpha is the other. Alpha is going to be far more expensive than Rubbermaid, um, but that price does come with higher quality. I'm using Alpha shelving myself, and I've had this entire setup for, I think, five, six years. It's lasted me a really long time. It has a few scratches in it from, you know, me moving it around and things like that. But other than that, it's does it's not warped. Um, it The wood looks perfectly fine. So yes, there are certainly higher, uh, high, uh, higher quality difference in the two. The other issue too with alpha shelving is that it's not available in all regions. As far as I can tell, it's only available in the United States and certain parts of Europe. Alpha shelving is from, I think, Denmark or Sweden. I can double check that. But yeah, if you're not in those countries, alpha shelving won't work. In recent years, Rubbermaid has decided to hop on the modular shelving bandwagon, which is perfectly fine. I'm all for competition in the market, and I'm also for alternative solutions. The difference I've noticed between Alpha Shelving and Rubbermaid uh, is that you can find the Rubbermaid uh, modular shelving ecosystem or pieces on Amazon. That's not something Alpha Shelving does. Alpha Shelving is only available through certain retailers. So yeah, you could buy Rubbermaid pieces from Amazon, which I'm sure everybody would like. So yes, you can um, you can get a piece of their shelving for. Uh, gaming on a rocking chair and using that for your keyboard and mouse. And then, on top of that, 
you can use their modular shelf unit to put your monitor and other things on top of. With how modular it is, you can move it up or down um, as needed for, you know, if the rocking chair is a different height or what have you. That would allow you to uh, move the rocking chair under the shelf unit. That's what I do in my setup. I have my rocking chair um, just a little under the alpha shelving. My monitor, laptop, and computer all sit on the alpha shelving to keep the wires off the floor so the rocking chair doesn't have to worry about um, getting entangled with wires at the very bottom of the uh, setup. You can do it too. It's not that hard to do, uh, especially with Rubbermaid because of how cheap it is. And hopefully it's available in more countries. But yeah, that's enough about my setup and alternatives with that. Let's go ahead and finish this up with two other products. I think I've mentioned this before in prior recordings, but I can recommend SodaStream as an alternative if you're a soda drinker or just looking for uh, caffeine in general. Uh, SodaStream does have an energy and soda line along with other things. Um, there is going to be um, a lot more options here than you would think. The brand name is really misleading. I don't think it should be called SodaStream anymore, but it is what it is. Anyway, so yes, if you looking for if you're looking for that caffeine, uh, Dr. Pete is their Dr. Pepper equivalent. Um, their energy line is going to be the equivalent of Monster, just a lower caffeine count, not by much, of course, but certainly lower. And uh, I would recommend that as an alternative to that. Moving on. Okay, this is the other product I want to mention real quickly. Um, in terms of healthy products, I do want to also mention Herbaland. In the United States, the FDA does not regulate supplements or vitamins as far as I can tell. I've done a lot of reading into this, and that appears to be the case. Because of that, I don't like to trust off-the-shelf um, vitamins or supplements. Canada, on the other hand, does have heavy regulations. This is evident if you look at uh, .gov, health, or other articles. Herbaland has banned, or I'm sorry, Canada has banned um, products like HydroxyCut, which I don't know why isn't, it isn't banned in the United States yet, but it is certainly banned in Canada. Um, HydroxyCut's really bad because it uses, I think it's called Yonbean, which is like a chemical used in heart medicine. Yeah, that's really bad for you be taking as a supplement. But anyways, yeah, so between that and the other evidence, it's pretty easy to see Canada does regulate the crap out of things, and that's great. That brings us to Herbaland. Herbaland is a Canadian vitamin company, which means that they're under the same regulations as everything else. Um, I've been using Herbaland vitamins for a number of years, and I can say that I've been very happy with it. If you do order from here, just be aware that it's in Canadian dollars. So you're going to have to do a uh, currency conversion to see what the actual uh, cost is um, with your currency. So don't let that confuse you, because once you get to the checkout or if you're looking at individual products, it's all in Canadian dollars. It may seem really high. Uh, once you go to checkout, it may say something like 100 to 150 Canadian dollars. Don't freak out. It's just Canadian dollars. Just do the currency conversion. That was the same th same thing I went through when I first started going through Berlin. I got really confused there for a moment. I was like, oh, wait, it's Canadian dollars? Oh, yeah, I, I totally missed that on my first purchase. But, um, yeah, I want to make sure you don't miss it. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening.